Good morning everyone, Adam here. I'm out for a walk and a talk and I wanted to talk about performance ratings. So, performance ratings. Really mixed feelings about this because I'm a reward professional, mostly compensation. So things like annual salary reviews, things like um, annual bonuses, um, yeah, a performance rating, very important part of that process, really very helpful for differentiating employees and the reward they might receive. But in terms of their purpose, in terms of why do we even have them? What function are they performing? I'm really not that convinced on their merits. So let's break it down. Let's think about it and try and understand what performance ratings are for. So performance management process, performance development, Okay, straightforward enough. We want to get the best out of our people. We want to be talking to them about what they're doing, helping shape their journey, help improve them. And there's lots of different ways to do that, but where performance ratings come into it is as an annual assessment of their performance. So, okay, what does it tell us? What does it give us? And, well, what does it give the employee? So, you know, it's their development at the heart of this. We want them to be as effective as possible. What are they getting out of a rating? Well, they're getting a word. You are sitting down, you're talking about 12 months of performance, and you distill that performance into a word. Um, rating scales, I've seen as many as 10. Uh, with shades of, uh, you know, sometimes improvement required or sometimes exceeds and things like that. And you've got uh, as few as four um, in terms of, you know, an actual rating. Um, but yeah, it's just, you're batching people, you're putting them into groups and you're saying, yeah, overall, your performance fits into this category. So, what does it tell the employee? I mean, there's, there's descriptions that go about it. I mean, you know, um, you know, oh, well, it's obvious if there's something that's below performance, okay, I need to buck up my ideas. If there's something that's, you know, the vanilla, it's like, yeah, this is generally fine. If there's something that's better, yeah, I've been generally performing, you know, above standard, well, great. Does it add value? Does it give a lot, you know, to get your essentially a, B, C, D, you know, rating on your performance? I'm not convinced. And also, when you look at the principles of performance management, you look at effective ways to develop people, having an annual review that is backwards looking, is fundamentally flawed. I mean, you sit down with someone and you spend your time talking about what they've done in the past 12 months. Reflection is important, absolutely, but that's the past. The future is ahead of us. Not what did we do, but what are we going to do in future? What are we going to do differently? How am I going to develop you? How are we going to change and improve you? That's forward looking. So with a rating, you're distilling 12 months of experience to uh, a few words. You're making it very simplistic and you are simultaneously putting a very heavy backwards looking focus on the review rather than forward looking. And particularly if there is then compensation attracted, attached to the rating, it's very easy for people to get hung up on that word. When people appeal performance management reviews, how often are they appealing some fundamental part of it or how often are they appealing the rating? How often is it saying, you've told me I need development when I should be uh, the middle. You've told me I'm the middle when I should be exceeds. Okay, you're arguing about the rating, you're arguing about what you have done, not where you're going. That's not performance management anymore, that's compensation. And so, from my point of view, I don't think the employees are getting very much out of it, but let's flip it around to the business. What are they getting? Well, I've touched on the compensation angle. Yes, it makes my life easier as a numerical exercise 
to be able to put people in groups and then distribute cash sort of pushing it towards the people that uh, have been shown to be higher performers by this rating. And companies also enjoy the knowledge that they've somehow got this, uh, this data about their employees, who their strong performers are. And that's good, but then what about where actually that breaks down? Forced ranking, forced distribution curves, absolute bugbear of mine, um, because they make no sense. So at their heart, a forced distribution curve is saying, we don't trust our people. We don't think that they can give objective assessment on the criteria and the ratings that we've provided. Why do I say that? Well, what kind of company do we all aspire to be? I think we all aspire to be high performance organisations. And what's the logical consequence of a high performance organisation? It has collectively high performing individuals. If you'd actually achieved your goal, surely you would have generally far more people who are exceeding expectations. But forced distribution says no, you can't have too many high performance individuals. There must be a cream of the crop. There must be poor performers. Think about that. You're managing performance um, in your organisation, you're helping and developing people, you're catching underperformance really early and then at the end of the year you get told no, some of these people must be underperforming. Tell me who they are. And so what you end up with is not an honest assessment of the performance of your organisation, but a forced one. You have the relative performance of the individuals. You know who your stronger people are and your weaker people are. But does that mean that they are bad? Does that mean that they are underperforming? And again, I mean, people might say there'll always be distributions of people, there'll always be stronger people and weaker people. And again, that's fine. But we're putting them in competition with each other. We're letting people know that you are going to be judged relative to your peers, and therefore you're in competition with your peers, not in collaboration. And so therefore you encourage competitive behaviours, which includes hoarding information, which includes pushing other people down. And what does your organisation get as a result of having this information about forced distribution? Well, you don't know if you have a performance problem. You don't know if you have achieved a high performance culture. You do know who your relative performers are, and if you choose to, you could use that to direct some of the wealth, but you might end up not directing money to people who are good performers but they are relatively weaker performers. You may end up forcing them out of the business and having to replace them with an unknown quantity and as a result, harm the effects of your business. It's really very perverse to me. I mean, forced rankings, if you're doing forced ranking, ditch your ratings. You're not getting anything meaningful out of it, honestly. But say you're not doing forced rankings. Well, again, it's just, you are getting an honest assessment, that's great, but it's still reductive. And of course, my favourite example, one council one year had to abandon its uh, performance related pay increments because over 90% of their people were rated the very top performance element. And when you put this in the uh, background of very low pay, frozen pay, I suspect a lot of managers were looking at it as a way to try and boost their people's pay in a low pay culture. But they couldn't afford to do that. They couldn't uh, afford to give all everyone these pay related increments. And they said, look, we're gonna give no one it. It became meaningless. So people were then trying to game it to get a financial result. And again, that is perverse. The performance management conversation, the performance management process is not about performance so long as you have ratings at the heart of it. It's about compensation. It's about a false sense of control of the business and a lack of trust. So, you may 
guess where I stand on this issue. I don't like performance ratings anymore. I don't see the value of them. I would much rather that we as an HR community, as a people community, have a people conversation and focus forward on how we improve our people and how we develop them and results rather than trying to put people in little standalone boxes, let alone dictate how many boxes they can be put into. All right, the performance rating conversation. Thank you very much for joining me on this walk and talk. Cheerio.